Here we go again. Better get ready to run. in trouble. Better hurry. now. I got a really bad feeling about all of this. I'm gonna need those keys to the diner now. There's a motel key there that I have to get. Oh, hey, you don't have to do that. I have the motel master key. I work for the same company, you know. Um, what's at the motel? Well... There's a dead guy. He's got something I need to get into the Mount Redtooth Observatory. God, that's awful. Hey, um, you wanted to know about the guy who looked like you, didn't you? The last time you said he had a party, and, but you didn't go. I... no, that's not true. I did go. It was really great at first, and, and then... I didn't see it myself, but I hear he turned nasty. He hurt a bunch of guys pretty bad, and there was this girl, he... She died. But I didn't hear about that until afterwards. I thought that he was so charming. And then he went to the diner. That's, that's right. I wasn't involved. I wasn't involved with that at all. I don't know what happened. Fine. I need to check out these motel rooms. In the meantime, you stay here, okay? I'm serious. Keep the lights on and stay here. Yeah, okay. You got it. I sure hope you're right about this. You're gonna stay here this time, right? Because the last time I didn't and that thing, whatever it is, happened to me? Yeah. I don't want you to get hurt again. Don't worry, I'm gonna stay put. I don't remember what happened exactly, but I learned my lesson. Good. It doesn't have to happen exactly the same way this time around. You proved that much when you went out and got those things for me. I think you're gonna be okay. Let's hope you're right. Faith haunts Emma Sloan and fills her with dread. This time, she does as she's told. It's not enough to save her.
It's said that nobody knows what the future might bring, but for this man, it's no longer entirely true. A weaker man might simply give up, but the Champion of Light is an expert on destiny. Sometimes the puppet and puppeteer can be one and the same. Mount Redtooth, its top littered with man-made eyes that stare into the endless depths of space. Tonight, the Champion of Light will depend on them to pick out a message from the ether. As history repeats itself, the man remembers the patterns. He knows that he needs the missing part for the telescope. I'd better find Dr. Meadows' car. That's where the camera should be. Thanks. I know what you're thinking. Evil twin, supernatural powers. But most of the time, I just like to keep things basic. I want you to understand that. Like this. Need to get your hands dirty? No batteries, no moving parts, just physics. That's technology you can depend on. It's a classic. Speaking of classics, you need to be careful with this one, though. If, if the victim suddenly twists, you might end up cutting yourself. It's not really a workhorse, but I'm a sucker for this style. Now this is more like it. You've got slip-resistant grip. Believe me, you really want that traction once you're wrist deep in somebody. 
The blade's stiff enough so it won't open by accident in your pocket, but it's still really easy to open with just one hand. Now that's a big thing for me. I know what you're thinking. It's too big, too heavy. But sometimes you just need the extra oomph. If you're talking intimidation, this is gonna do the job. Also great for dismemberings and whatnot. You know, the messy jobs. Ah, I can't tell you how many things I've MacGyvered with this stuff. Okay, now, guns. Not a big fan. I mean, how are you supposed to really connect with somebody with a bullet? I want you to understand that. I take pride in what I do. We can't both be worthless hacks, can we? You have to forgive me, but this feels very strange. It seems like this has all happened before. I have the replacement part for your telescope, Doctor. I... all right. Uh, let's get it installed. Problem with the cooling system. Yes, that's right. I remember. All right, let me think. If they're sabotaging it, they'll be at the primary coolant pipe outside. If you can secure it, we should be ready to pick up the signal. That is why you're here, isn't it? Yes, it is. I'll take care of it. Before you go, if you have the time, I'd appreciate if you came up here and explained a few things. All of this is very strange to me. I don't know what's going on, but I seem to remember having had this encounter before. It's not deja vu, Doctor. This has happened before. We're caught in a time loop. That's utterly insane. How could that be? I can't really explain it. I suppose I could call it magic. I don't believe in magic. Neither do I. But I can't argue with what I've experienced. Listen, what matters now is the signal. The last time we only caught a part of it. I need the rest of it. Whether you believe me or not, you want to look into this as much as I do, right? I... yes. All right. I realize that you have trouble believing this. That's an understatement. I can't deny that what you say resonates with me on some level I don't pretend to understand. But for all I know, I'm simply delusional. But it's not just you. I've experienced the same thing as you. Doesn't that prove something, at least? Maybe. On the other hand, given your appearance, and the fact that you're trying to convince me that I'm not insane, perhaps you're merely a hallucination that accompanies my delusions. You're not having a psychotic episode, Doctor. For what it's worth, I'm a skeptic by nature. I completely understand your reluctance to believe me. There are people caught so deep in their psychosis that they retroactively manufacture memories and beliefs that conform to the situation at hand. Sure, but you have to stop second-guessing yourself at some point if you want to get something done.
Locate the light. Doctor, Am I correct? Hear me? I think we're good to go. Turn on the lights and secure the area that way. All right. I'll start looking for the signal. Please head back. Find the signal? Yes. I don't think it's quite the same thing we had um, the last time. Still, we're definitely picking it up. Are we getting the complete signal now? I'm afraid not. Take a look at it yourself. I'm printing out a hard copy now. I'd like to ask you a question or two before that, though, if you don't mind. What's on your mind, Doctor? Most people would find these events extremely disturbing, provided that they survive these creatures, that is. You seem to be quite adept at dealing with the situation. Why is that? Yes. I was involved in... It's a complex story. I was in this small town, and a horrible thing from another dimension kidnapped my wife and manipulated me into writing this horror story that came true. I learned to fight it with light, and I managed to contain it and free my wife. But I was trapped in its world. Are you serious? Absolutely. So, I'm used to reality working in strange or even impossible ways. And I fought these things, not exactly like this, but close enough for a good while now. Of course, I have certain advantages. Was there anything else? What did you mean when you said you have advantages? At the risk of sounding like a lunatic, reality is much more fluid than people think. It can be influenced. I didn't take you for a mystic. I'm not. I'm a writer. And under certain conditions, I can, for lack of a better word, rewrite reality. Change things. That's absurd. But it works. Assuming... I believe this? Why don't you simply, I don't know, write yourself some superpowers? It's not quite that simple. You need to follow certain laws of drama, I suppose. You need to think about consistency and symbolism. Often what you write isn't anywhere near as important as what you imply. There are things out there that will take advantage of your mistakes. You really believe in this? Don't look at me like that. You've experienced some of this yourself. I will gladly admit that something exceedingly strange is going on. But this idea that you're somehow altering reality with your writing is ridiculous. 
You're essentially saying you're controlling my actions. Leaving aside the rational arguments against this, what gives you the right? Well, it's more like having a destiny. A path you're on. You're not aware of it, but there it is. If somebody changes it, what difference does it make? It's what every writer does. If you write something that affects one of the characters, they don't really know about that. I'm not a character. Are you saying that it's all right to take advantage of someone if they aren't aware of it? Look, all I meant was that if you're genuinely making all your own decisions, and those decisions lead to whatever destiny you have, what practical difference does it make? I suppose that depends on whether our destinies are determined by things like physics and probabilities, or natural reality, which is presumably neutral and impartial, or by some kind of an intelligence. If it's the latter, that intelligence makes choices based on some criteria. If we suffer as a result of those choices, there's a moral and ethical element involved, regardless of whether we're aware of its manipulations. Wouldn't you agree? I... You're taking this very well. I thought you'd be hangry. I suppose I would be if I thought you could actually do this. Another printout. Another signal fragment. The message is still not complete, but it's another piece of the weapon he has built against his adversary. Mere words on a piece of paper, but in the right hands, they will hold back the darkness. Last time the man came to the drive-in, it did not end well. He hopes to avoid that fate this time. He hopes that what he has brought with him to this place is enough. Ugh. Serena's probably out of her mind again. But I'm gonna need that key so I can get the power back on. You again? I'm really just here to get the keys so I can get the power back on. You want to hold me down? It's okay. I know you like that. Yeah, I'll just grab the keys. I could be like your wife. Little wifey. Waiting at home for hubby. Or you could be the mailman. Or the neighbor. I'm already married to someone who isn't crazy, thanks. I'm just gonna go and get the power back on. Aww. Look, I may or may not be back. I have the access code to the booth already, so once the power is on... You should totally come see me. We could have fun. You know. We'll see how it goes. You should sit down or something. Try to stay calm. I don't want to be calm. I want to be nasty. I want to be nasty with you. Yeah. Okay. You could do anything you want. You can use my... Let's not even go there. I was hoping that you'd remember more, but I guess that was too much to ask. I was about to do the weather, but uh, I see we have a caller. Uh, hey, you're on the air with Eddie. What's up? Hey, Eddie, it's Ricky. You talked about fate before. You think about that a lot? Not a lot, to be honest, but uh, I take it you do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Any conclusions you'd care to share, uh, Ricky? Well, we've got free will, right? That's in the Bible and everything. Yeah, right, sure. So free will, right? Am I right? I mean, if we can do what we want, how can there be fate? I mean, you don't know what's going to happen next, so there's no fate. There's just people doing stuff. Well... I don't know, Ricky. I don't suppose you have considered the possibility that we're all here in the service of a greater purpose, incomprehensible to us, and that what we take to be freedom is nothing more than the move of a pawn on some cosmic chessboard, limited in scope, subject to the whims of unseen players, existing only for their entertainment. Or perhaps we're just a twist of reflection of actual events that can happen elsewhere. Could it be that such is life in Night Springs? Um, dude, what? 
Food for thought, Ricky. Food for thought. I want to talk about Alice. Just look at her. She's really beautiful, isn't she? Your wife. Well, our wife, really. <laughs> Just my wife soon. Don't worry. I'm not going to treat her like the others. She's special. If I wanted her dead, she would be. I've been around for a while now. So talented. You haven't seen your new work, of course. Oh, it takes my breath away. Really, she's that good. Oh. Did you know that I've got a wedding ring, too? We're that similar. She's seen me a couple times, you know. I've let her catch glimpses. She thinks she's imagining things, of course. She thinks you're dead. It might as well be. I mean, even if you manage to keep surviving, you'll be in my trap forever. So I'll go to her. It'll be an amazing moment. Oh my God, you're alive. I'll be the good, loving husband for as long as I can stand it. She'll love it. <sighs> and then, one day, somehow, it'll happen. Maybe I'll slip up, she spots something, or maybe she just starts running her mouth. And then, I'll do it. It's gonna be sweet. Ah. <sighs> for all the good it'll do you.
die, you lose. If you quit, you lose. If you make it to the end of the loop, you still lose. <laughs> Sucker.
the Champion of Light knows that the time itself is about to end. At least for him. He can feel the dead end rushing towards him. But there is time to act. Incomplete or not, he has the weapon. I don't have the whole thing. But maybe it's enough. Cute, aren't you? What are you up to? It's a waste of time, buddy! You should just lie down and die! Let me take over! This is the only thing you've got coming to you! From here to eternity! No matter how many times you come back... Time folds back on itself. Again, his senses scream as the very impossibility of what is happening assaults them. But the Champion of Light endures. Each time he gets a little closer, each time another detail falls into place. Now, the trap works against the Herald of Darkness. Holy shit! What are you, the King Hillbilly? Right on cue, bubbling to the surface from untold depths, the horrors come. The emerging monsters do not expect the warm reception that has already been prepared for them.
stops, saving Emma. Are you feeling neglected? You shouldn't. You know Eddie Rodman's got love for you, which is why I actually hauled myself out of bed before noon, just so I could record an interview for your pleasure. Enjoy. Now, as I'm sure you all know, the annual Night Springs Visual Arts Show is coming around again, and that's a big deal for all of us that are in the culture business. If you can call it a business, that's a little controversial, I know. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Money makes the world go around, no doubt about it. <laughs> and that's one of my guests here at the studio, Serena Valdivia. She's a curator at the Night Springs Gallery of Visual Arts, and she's in charge of the NSVA Film Festival, held this year at the old Night Springs Drive-In Theater. Hello, Eddie. It's great to be here. And let me just say that it's a wonderful venue. Absolutely. And with her is one of the filmmakers, somebody who's actually primarily known as a renowned photographer, Alice Wake. Hello. Alice, I've seen a lot of your work over the years. It's very impressive. Uh, my wife's a big fan, actually. Oh, thank you. You've, uh, you've gained quite a bit of fame as a photographer, but that's not why you're here, right? You actually have a film. That's a little surprising. For me, too. I really wouldn't be here at all if it weren't for Serena. Uh, you two are friends, I take it? Yeah, we move in the same circles. So about a year ago, I heard about all this footage she'd shot, and I got to see some of it, and then I started pestering her about actually putting it out there, because it was really good. I didn't really want to show it. It felt too personal. Well, yes, I can understand that. It, it, uh, it features your husband, and he's, um, well... Uh, he's... he's dead. Um, I, I thought he was missing. It's been two years. I... this sounds awful, but yes, I believe he's dead. Otherwise, he would have... Well, you know. Yeah, I understand. Well, hold that thought, and uh, we'll be right back. So I've been thinking about Barry. I don't know what to do about him yet. I mean, I'm not going to keep him around, that's for sure. Al. Al! Ugh, little parasite. Your best friend. Really. That's the best you can do. I actually kind of like the guy. He's a plucky little butterball. He plays the clown. That's a hard road to take. <laughs> but I don't need him sticking his fat face in my business. <sighs> Did you know he's been hanging out with the sheriff from that shitty little town? They keep in touch. Barry's about the only guy who insists that you're not dead. How about that? <sighs> I might keep him alive for a while. <laughs> Just to see him go to pieces when I fire his ass. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Get 
Yeah, thanks for saving me again. I'd hate to die before I'm scheduled to be murdered. I guess I have you to thank for setting everything up at the oil derrick. Yeah, well, I figured that if we were going to go over this again, we might as well try to be smart about it, huh? I appreciate it. You took a big chance doing that. Are you okay? What do you think? I've died twice. I remember everything pretty clearly now. You said I was gonna be okay. I don't know what happened. Well, it's not your fault. I think one of those, what did you call them? The, the takers? I think they did something to the power and they got me that way. I'm sorry. But I got the keys from the dead guy in that room. And I'm not handing them over until you do something about this. I'm sick of getting killed. Fair enough. You seem calmer now. I tried freaking out. Didn't do much good for me. I guess you get used to the craziest stuff. Good for you. Plus, I figured I'd take the edge off, you know? Mm-hmm. Those herbal supplements are pretty good, huh? Oh, yeah. I wanted to try to explain things to you now, since you're calmer, but maybe this isn't the best time after all. Oh, shit, yeah. Better not get all metaphysical on me now. Seriously, I'm like two sentences away from thinking how we could all be like atoms on God's skin or something. Or figments of somebody's imagination? Um, wow. Uh, I'm just gonna try to chill out and not think about that or, or getting murdered or anything, if you're cool with that. Gotcha. Okay. I really don't think they can get to the power now. Thank you. That's a relief. Um, here's the keys that you needed. Thank you. Hey, I have to tell you. At the diner, I went there with him. The guy who looks like you, okay? I know I said that I didn't. Yeah, I figured. Want to talk about what happened at the diner? There was this guy from the observatory, and... He just attacked the poor dude, smashed his face into the tabletop a bunch of times. It was horrible. I... I didn't know that he was gonna do that. I swear. And I just ran. I just left him there. I didn't even try to help. There was nothing you could have done. It's not your fault. Well, he's dead in that motel room now, so excuse me if I feel pretty shitty about it anyway. You shouldn't blame yourself. I just didn't want to get involved. I have this tendency to just drop everything and run. I don't think I'm a bad person, but I... I didn't even call the cops. I'm such a coward. If you'd called the cops, we'd have dead cops. He's not human. Do you understand? It's not your fault. But I could have tried to stop him. Believe me, if you had, you'd be dead. You seem to be doing a little better now. Yeah, I guess it just got easier once I got this thing off my chest. I just feel so guilty about it, especially because I didn't pick up on any of the warning signs. I just really liked hanging out with him, you know? He was smart and charming and funny and hot. The way you could be, I guess. I guess. What's the deal with this guy anyway? He looks like you, he uses your name. Why does he do this stuff? I'm not sure myself. Maybe he's just evil or my dark half. He does a lot of the stuff I'm trying really hard to get away from. Things that just messed up my life. I guess all those murders don't help either. Yeah, I could do without the murders in the end of the world. Listen, I need to get going. Yeah, go. I think I'm good now. I hope. Good luck. If it all goes well, maybe this is the last time we meet like this. God, wouldn't that be great? Just keep those lights on, okay?
The fate of countless individuals hangs in the balance, threatened by the machinations of the Herald of Darkness. And yet, for a moment, the Champion of Light breathes a little easier. He has saved one life. For this moment, it is enough. And soon, perhaps, he can put an end to this. Returning to the observatory for what he hopes is the final time, the man feels anticipation and dread in equal measure. Soon, he knows he will have what he needs. Hello, I was expecting you. I've already taken care of the imaging array, but you should still look into securing the primary coolant flow. With some luck, you may be able to light the area before these things even show up. to look into the sky. Right there, Doctor. This is what you look like. Does that bother you? I bet it does. I'm not just wearing your face, you know. It goes a lot deeper than that. There's a lot of you and me. All the best parts. At first, I was just an idea. But they kept telling all those stories about you. You already had that rep. 
And then you disappeared mysteriously. And then the stories about bad, crazy Alan Wake came true. And here I am. That's the best part, isn't it? When that happens, you can always count on Cauldron Lake. <sighs> I'm just as real as you are. And I'm the improved version. No fears, no doubt, no weaknesses, no self-deception here. I don't let anything drag me down. I know you like I know myself. I know it bothers you that I'm like this, that I use your name, crawl my way into your life, but I only do it because I'm better at being you than you ever were. Just rude. Are you all right? I'll live. I'm glad. I'll send the lift down to you. I remember our previous encounters very clearly now. But technically, if this really is a loop in time, we've never met before. I don't know why our awareness persists, but it's bloody fascinating. You know, I know physicists who would give 15 years of their lives for a chance to experience something like this. I'd imagine that being stalked by horrible axe murderers would curb their enthusiasm a little. Clearly you've never met hardcore physicists. I'm glad you're in such good spirits, but- the Signal! Yes, it's completed! Finally! If all goes well, this should be the last time we go through the loop. You know, I just realized that I don't have any memory of what happens after you leave. What does that mean? I don't think it means anything. If everything goes well, you just keep going. I don't show up here like this again. No more bad guys. Things go back to normal. Let's hope you're right. I'd love the opportunity to look into this in more detail. Looks like you've accepted the situation. I'm a pragmatist. If this is a delusion, at least my first psychotic episode is anything but boring. Really, Mr. Wake, at the end of the day, I'm a scientist. I love mysteries. I love not knowing. Whatever else this might be, it's absolutely fascinating. 
I wonder how far this reaches. Is everybody in the world experiencing this? Who knows? I think reality's probably pretty fragile right now. Doctor, I can see you're very enthusiastic about this. I'd appreciate a bit of discretion. Are you suggesting that we should suppress this? No. You can do what you like, but I want you to leave me out of it. But surely, with the things you know, the things you've experienced, you can replicate any of these results. We could- Let me be blunt. If you drag me into this, I'll deny everything. I'll lie like my life depended on it. And writers are damn good liars. Word of advice, this is things man was not meant to know territory. You get into this, chances are you'll open up a door into a world of hurt. Believe me, I know. I see. In a strange way, he feels at ease. He is armed with his own words, and when the time comes, they will be enough or they will not. For now, he's content to let the currents take him toward the final confrontation. Once more, we return to the drive-in. If he's aware of the absurdity of arming oneself with a few sentences and standing against a power that can pierce time itself, he doesn't show it. The man has his share of weaknesses, perhaps more, but cowardice is not among them.
never getting out of this wake, never! Don't worry, I'll take care of your wife and your life! think you're doing, but I'll send you right back to the beginning. What? You think whatever it is you're gonna do is gonna make a difference? This'll end up just like before! for a while now, you know? While well, you've been indisposed, stuck in the darkness, I've been busy. I operate in the shadows, not always literally, you understand? I'm a little more resilient than those I've taken, but I do my best work in the dark. Ugh. And there's so much darkness out there! It goes deep, and the things that live in it are big bastards. Can I find a little bit of elbow room? All that chaos and madness, it doesn't really do that much down there. It's like pouring a glass of water into the ocean, right? But up here? Yeah, you can really make an impact. All they need is someone to bring them all the way through. But first, I had to take care of you, you party pooper. You're stuck in an eternal cycle now. The sun's never coming up for you. Everything else? Do my thing. Get a bit of quality time with Alice. <laughs> That's a little something for me. And I deserve it. I held the film canister in my hands. I saw her name written across it in big letters, followed by the title. It was a time capsule, moments snatched from times gone by, from a past that I hoped could also be our future. It was my salvation, our salvation, our chance to be together. A tin can with a bit of magic in it that she didn't even know about, something I could put to good use. There were only moments left before I had to face him. I'm hoping I can put an end to this now. You'd better. I really don't want that to happen to me again. 
It's like somebody vomited in my brain, like a sleazy movie that keeps looping in my head. I'll stop this, I swear. You know the part that's really screwed up? If you mess it up, it'll just keep happening forever, right? I don't think I can deal with that. Don't think about that. I don't think of anything but. Hey, afterwards, when all this is done, look me up. This thing, I can probably help you deal with it. I don't know. It's almost like I'm not even in the same world anymore. Everything's just weird now. Yeah, I know. A lot of that'll pass with time. But being touched by the darkness, it's rough on you. It's a lot to process. And I just don't want you to get completely screwed up by this. Might be a little late for that, to be honest. Yeah, well, there's degrees. At least you're not at a point where you go around picking fights with people over not changing their light bulbs often enough. What? Never mind. All I'm saying is, you're not alone with this. And anyway, you're friends with Alice, so, you know, any friend of hers. Thank you. Hello, folks, and welcome to the third part of our pre-recorded interview with Serena Valdivia and renowned photographer Alice Wink. So, uh, tell me about the film. It's called Sunrise, and it really wasn't something I ever thought of as an actual film. It was just footage, things I saw and happened to shoot. It's not a medium I'm very much at home with. You shouldn't put yourself down. You've got a great eye. Maybe, but experience is another thing. Because you're primarily a still photographer. Yes, exactly. So I'm really used to thinking of the world in terms of snapshots. I frame something and try to pick the right moment, and then reveal that moment to people. Moving images are a different story. I'm still learning a lot about it, to be honest. So this is a new thing for you? <laughs> or maybe I'm just a slow learner. But showing it like this is definitely a new step for me. It's a little weird taking something this intimate and showing it to everybody. Not that the material itself is somehow shocking, it's just that those were private moments. But that's why it works, because it feels genuine. It's not so much a story as it is a sort of an echo, showing us how you saw your husband at the time. It's not really about the sunrise itself or Alan watching it. It's about you two together. I suppose. It's funny looking at it now, especially now that it's been edited like that. It takes on a life of its own almost. It's a kind of a fantasy. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. No, you're right. I'm glad you talked me into it. Again, the champion of light enters the final trap. The new reality is almost here. All he needs to do is change the details of the scene, push it past the breaking point, and the rest will snap into place.
Oh, come on, buddy. Why don't you... What? What is this? actual events or merely a dream, a memory or a glimpse of what is to come. One thing is certain. This scene takes place in another time and another place far, far away from Night Spring.
Ow. 